Hi, this is Pete Lyons with another Let's Play Salesforce video. And today we're doing part four of Einstein Analytics Binding Basics. Where last we had left off, we have a uh, chart group by industry and a reference line that shows us the average amounts amongst those industries. Today what we want to do is we want to add a limit toggle so we can see either the top five, top ten, or all industries. And we want our reference line to reflect only the industries that we're seeing. Let's get started. So first, I'm going to make it a little easier to see what's going on here. Um, I want to see how many industries I'm actually returning. So I'm going to go to the bar chart parameters on that, and I'm going to set the auto fit to fit. Next, I want to know what my limit or uh, my reference line is actually returning. So I'm going to put a number widget down here. Amount underscore one is the step that's powering the reference line. Just want to keep track of what that number is. Right now, it's 1.13 million. So uh, next thing I want to do is I want to add a limit statement to uh, this bar chart. It's powered by the step industry underscore one. So let's go find it. I'm going to copy it from here. Control E to get to my code editor. Control F. Control V to paste in that value. That takes me right to the step. So let's take a look at the query here. We're bringing an average amount grouped by industry, ordered by average amount uh, descending. And we want to add a new parameter to our query. Uh, limit is possibly the only parameter that you can't control from the UI at all. Uh, so you're always going to need to add this through your JSON. Whenever you're adding a parameter to a query, I would recommend adding it to the top uh, if no, for no other reason than it helps you to avoid syntax errors by putting it in the wrong place. Limit, that's going to take an integer. So let's say limit 5. So limit colon 5 comma. <laughs> Let's see what that does. So now our bar chart is uh, limiting to only show us the top five industries. But we see that our reference line hasn't changed at all. And the value should actually be 1.44 million now. So let's add a binding to our uh, step that's powering the reference line so that it's only going to bring in the industries that are being uh, returned by our step industry underscore one. So again, our reference line is powered by amount underscore one. Uh, so we're going to go into our editor and find that. So here's our step. We need to add a filter to it. So again, we're going to add our filters parameter at the top. Filters takes a two-dimensional array. Each array within that represents one filter. We want to say, I want to filter by the industry. And I want to filter where it's what's being returned from my industry step. Double curlies to start the binding. I need a column. Column takes two parameters. First parameter is the step name. I want to I want to filter by the industries that are in my industry underscore one step, which is a step powering the chart. I want the results. And then I need to declare what column or columns in an array. The column names need to be in escaped quotes. The name of the column is industry. And I need to pass it in as an object, which is a function, so it needs parentheses. So first, go and get the current results of the industry column in the industry underscore one step, return them as an object, and then filter this step where the industry is found in that result. Let's see if that worked. So now we see we've got 1.44 million. So now we've applied uh, the, uh, we're now filtering by the results of the above chart. So now we want to create our toggle so that we can dynamically change that limit. So I'm going to create a step. No, not that kind of step. I'm going to create a static step. I'm going to name it static limit. For my first value, I want top 5, pass in an integer 5. 
top 10, passing the integer of 10. And what if we don't want to limit at all? Well, if we pass null into the limit, then it won't limit us. So for all, I want to pass in null. And that is case sensitive. So I'm going to hit create. And best practice, if you want to bind to a toggle, make sure you get it on the screen first and that you've got something you can uh, something selected in there. So put our static limit on the toggle. Go to our step parameters and set it to single selection required. This way there will always be a value to pass in. So let's take a look at the static step that we just created. And anything that you create through the UI, uh, the most newly created thing is always going to be at the top of the steps parameter of the dashboard. Once you save and reload, it's going to be reordered alphabetically. And there is one thing we need to update here. Now, the system was smart enough to know that 5 and 10 are integers and did not enclose them in quotes. But it thought null was just a string. And we don't want the string null. We want the actual keyword null. So notice when we remove the quotes, it changes colors. <clears throat> now we're going to bind to it. So now we've got industry 1. And we want to dynamically pass in the limit. So we're going to add our binding. It's going to be a column. The step that we're bringing it from is static limit underscore 1. We want the current selection from the column in escaped quotes. Name of the column is value. And we want to return it as an object, which is a function. So my limit is whatever the current selection in the value column of static limit 1 is returned as an object. So let's take a look if that works. So we can see as we toggle from top 5 to top 10 to all, not only does our chart update, but our reference line knows to move. So. That concludes today's video, part four of Binding Basics. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that uh, you learned something. So please like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.